folks, welcome to Beyond the Lines. It's time to uh, work on the second uh, video for Pink and Purple. Today I'm going to work with Tombow and Faber-Castell pens, so they are Indian ink markers. And I'm going to work in the Happy Zen coloring book. And I decided to take this page here and change things up from last week. I'm working with mainly cold tones of uh, purple and pink and I'm going to have more purple than pink. I said it in the last video last week that I would do that this week. Well, I'm going to do that and I'm going to combine the Tombows and the Faber-Castell pens and I'm going to show you what I choose for what exactly. So, here we go. So, like I had promised last week, I would go more on the purple side today than I uh, had last week. Last week I was more on the pink side. The things that I'm going to use are uh, for the first layer are the Tombow markers. Now these are Indian ink markers that you can liquefy and then have them uh, be like with a watercolor -y look. I'm also having the Faber-Castell pit brush pens next to me so the purples and pinks would be between my pinky finger, finger and my pointy finger here. So I can put those on top of the Tombows if I like. Um, if I want really harsh contrast, I could also just dry things off and then have the same color that I used on top. The difference between the Faber-Castells and the Tombows is the Faber-Castells are not liquefiable with water. So I want to work on this page here. And the first thing that peeks out to me are those... Uh, they look like artichokes. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to have a bit of that color in here because I want this very pale. I'm going to pick it up with my water brush and uh, color this. If I don't want colors pale or if I just want to pull them I can also have the, um, you're going to see that later on with the stems, I'm going to use the same marker. I can use them right on the paper and then not uh, have the squeaky thing here. Hold on. I'm going to edit the squeaking so that it doesn't bother you when you listen to this, but it's kind of loud in real life before editing. So just going to give this a very pale layer. Any other of these? Nope. So I'm going to put that marker aside. Now I'm going to think, what else do I want? Uh, let me look at my uh, color swatch. I use the, what's it called? 603. That's here. Uh, I want the 533. Although that's almost a blue. So, no, that's not in here. No. Um, then I'm going to take, I'm going to take the 665 and I'm going to work on another, um, on another flower and I'm really going to make it pop. So, for the leaves, I'm thinking the very dark purple with... Hmm. Well, it's actually, I should get the 553. That is quite the dark. It's purpley. Do I have it here? No, I don't. Uh, so, I should get the 5. 33. Yeah, it looks kind of blue, 
but it actually is more of a violet. So I'm going to take that and the very dark one for the leaves, which I'm going to do now so that I then can evaluate, okay, what uh, else do I want to be done? So uh, what I said earlier, what I could do is just take the marker to the paper right away and then liquefy the pigment, but it will seep in quite a bit into the paper before I can get to liquefying it. Because this paper is very thirsty and it is not as movable as it is when I pick it up. So I'm going to pick it up. I'm gonna pick it up from my palette and that will make it a bit cleaner in the way I color. So this one here needs to be colored as well. Now, where's, oh, holding it in my hand. Um, I have to see, there's another one of these uh, flowers, so they have the same leaves. Which means that this one here and this one here are also the light colors. I'm not gonna add any shading now. That's what I, I think I like to do with the um, Faber Castells, so I'm not gonna take away from that. Um, but I think this one here, this leaf here, I want to have it in the same light tone. So here. And here. And then it goes here. I'm being not very particular with uh, having to cover up every little white spot here. You can see there's splotches here and here. That is perfectly fine to me because I'm going for a kind of watercolory look whenever I liquefy a marker or a pencil or a crayon or something. So I want to have then the watercolor relook so that makes it actually be a bit uh, loose. So now I'm going to take the very dark purple. And I'm going to color the bigger leaves. I'm getting lighter towards the right hand side because there I think is the light. Uh, same goes with this leaf. A bit, of a bit of a darker tone and then a bit more of a liquefied tone. Might have a bit too much water. So, ooh, I actually like that. Have the light up here and the dark down there. So let's go with the dark here where it curls. Add some more pigment. That makes it darker too. Okay. I need a third leaf and I think I want this one here in the back. 
because I like to have odd, odd numbers of leaves or blossoms to color with the same color of the same shade of the color. Going to have to be a bit more careful here because I don't know what I want those um, twirly bits to be what color. So I'm not um, as loose with my painting as I was with other parts of that page. But by combining all of these purples, I haven't used pink yet. I have used three shades of purple so far. You can already get uh, quite the contrast and, and I think a nice color combination here. I think I'm going for five in this case, so another odd number five leaves to color with this combination. So one is behind here because that looks very similar to this one. So I'm going to say it is one of these. Which lets me color it in the same tone. The other one I think is back here. Okay, now I do have three more, four, uh, three more leaves and a few of these twirlies. So I'm going to take the um, color that I used for these. Uh, for these parts and I'm going to color the twirlies with them. Again, having color repetition. And it's a nice light shade that contrasts well against the very dark purple. So there's another one here. There's a twirly and there's another leaf. Um, so let's take the twirly, give it the same color. So one, let's take this one off, also give it the same color. So one, two, three, four, five leaves. I have another odd number, so I'm going to take another color. Maybe a bit more of a warm purple. Um, let's see, I have to take my swatch see which color I like to use. Um, is there any? Actually not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same one oh, that's exactly next to it. Um, is there another pink that kind of looks like a purple? Uh, let's see. No, not really. The 603 could work. So I'm taking 603. Did I take it already? Yeah, I did use it already. Well, then the 623, that's the other one. They're very similar. There's a double there. Uh, 623. I'm going to take that for the remaining leaves. It is very similar to this color here, but kind of different. And I'm also putting it next to the purples here so I can mix things up. And that way I have another color pop up. So let's take it pure though. It's a bit more on the cooler part of the spectrum. That's good. 
So you see, I'm just staying, like I said, with the purples. And I'm having more of the cold tones than the warm tones. There's a warm one. All the others are cold shades of purple. And by being so, well, kind of monochrome with the way I colored those leaves here so far, you can see that I'm leaving three flowers they will really pop against um, the purple when I put some pink to them. A little bit more here. Okay, that's that. Now I have to decide which pink I want. Because I'm pretty much done with the purples. I need to figure out which pink. Um, I think this is out of the way. This is way too bright, so I'm not gonna take 755. This would be cartoony. I don't want cartoony. I want mm, kind of natural. I don't want 725 either. Again, too bright. Um... I think I should have this and have it combined with another color. So what's another color? I do like this one here. So not this one. What are you? 673. Six. That one. So I'm going to combine these two to paint the remaining petals. Uh, blossoms, <laughs> not petals. Going to put the dark one in here. And the light one right beside it. And I can pull from the both and mix them. You can see here, mixy mixy, two color. Yeah, I love that. The more I get to the center, the lighter I become with the, or I get with my um, way of coloring. I think I pulled a bit of the brown. I don't want that. Clean my brush and give it a... Yep. Now I'm gonna go with the light here too. I'm gonna pull that pigment towards the edge. So this is gonna be a lighter flower. And uh, same goes for this upper section here. Going to liquefy that. Really have to work quick, otherwise this pigment is gonna seep into the paper and I cannot move it anymore. And for the lower part of the petals, like the ones around here, I'm gonna use the uh, purple that I also used for the midsection. Also going to add a bit of that purple to the center of the flower. Do not have it look cartoony. Very lightly outline the upper petals with very little of that uh, darker pink to not 
have it look too well too much colored out of the lines and I'm going to a bit of a stronger tone in the center here and clean up the lines of this big flower here. Just add some pigment here and there to give it a bit more dimension. Now I will let this dry and uh, then I will bring in my Tombow, uh, not my Tombow markers, my Fab Castell markers to add a smudge of detail. To clean my brush though first and dry this page off. I would have the Faber Castells on top and this not be dry, I would ruin them. So I have to be very careful. And I'm going to pull all of my pinks and purples. It's exactly these six markers. I'm going to start with uh, the um, artichokes, whatever they are, and I'm just I'm gonna add a little bit of pigment. So what I'm doing here is color matching. So I'm pulling the marker that is closest to the pigment that I have already had on my page here, and I'm just shading and putting the marker where I need a bit of a shadow or a contrast, therefore the color is darker so I have to add a bit of pigment to get that contrast there. See? Okay. Now this is actually more of a blue. Do I have a purple? Oh yeah. What are you? Light indigo. You're actually a blue. Nope. I'm not going to use you, so I don't have a marker that I could use here. So what I'm going to do is take the Tombow marker and add it dry. Not going to liquefy that. And you can th that's the nice thing about the Tombows, you can use them dry or wet. Makes for very nice effects actually. Just gonna add a bit of that marker here. Just also here where it's really dark there. Mm, there. Would I have had a tumble that would uh Oh gosh, a Faber Castell that would have had that color, I would have used that. But I don't, so I'm going to use the Tombow Dry. No water added, just adding a bit of pigment of it here and there. And if you ask yourself, um, how does she decide where to put the pigment? Um, I'm either putting extra color where I need shading. So for example, here in the curl or down here, or I add it to set apart things. So to have contrast, which means light, dark, light, dark in this snail kind of figure. Here, for example, I need the mid of the mid of the um, leaf, also the base. There's going to be a bit more shadow towards this side because it curls that way. So the light will hit this side. And here I need a bit more because there's leaves over leaves. 
so they shade each other. Just going with the line a bit where it comes be from behind the other leaf, so it needs a bit darker there. Same here, and then towards the curl. This is how I decide where I put pigment. Okay. And in the curl. All right, so I'm done with that marker. Now I have to decide. I don't have a color like that that is as soft, so I'm going to take the 623, which is the pigment that I used to have the uh, leaf colored. I'm just feathering in a bit of contrast here. Same here, feather in. That's enough. Enough, 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 enough. There is a bit of feathering going on. And here as well, from the middle of the leaf to the outside. Okay. Uh, I do have a very dark purple. Let me see if it's cold or warm. It's mm, kind of warm-ish. So I'm actually thinking, hold on, I have to put the tumble next to it. Yeah, it's way warmer, so I'm not going to use that Faber-Castell, but I'm going to use the tumble again. Because I don't want to mix up my warm and cold shades in my piece here. I want to keep it the way I uh, had it put down with the liquefied pigment. Now we'll liquefy that bit because it doesn't, doesn't look pretty. So I'm just gonna do it like this. And uh, some more dark pigment here behind the flower so that it pops. Also here, darkening this just a bit. And that leaves this one here again behind the flower where it pops towards the curl. And the one just down here. Making this darker makes everything that sits on top, the blue violet leaf, as well as all of these swirly bits here, it makes this pop. I don't like pattern. So I'm just going to paint over it or draw color over it. And from the curl upwards feathering that in as well. Uh, have to clean up my lines a bit because it's much there. So I'm just going to take a black marker and go over those lines again. Help them stand out on this particular leaf. But now I can go uh, to the last petals here and there I see there are um, there are dots and I want to fill them with the Tombow darkest purple. I had uh, ignored them while coloring 
with the water brush but now I think it's time to put them in okay uh, pinks I do I think I do have that shade is it this one yep so I'm going back to fathers and I'm going to add a bit of pigment where I think the leaves would have a shadow or something so right here for example I think the shadow is from the from the bottom so I'm putting in pigment towards the bottom of the flower just squiggle 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 something like this All right. Um, let's see what is that done? Oh, that's even darker. It's the same one, but even darker, so I can intensify a few little spots. Just some of them. That's enough. I'm going to use marker here that I also used on um, the artichoke just to add a bit of contrast and add a bit of dark. Enough. This one here. Hmm. Same thing. I'm just going to use the marker for the lines that are already there. And you can see there's circles and I'm going to use a white gel pen for that. Uh, there's very many um, leaves or uh, flower parts here that you could uh, have gel pen added to. They have a pattern that uh, would actually benefit from a gel pen but I'm not going to use it. So like this flower here I'm not going to. I will have this leaf, this leaf and this flower. I will have white gel pen on that. So I'm going to darken this part of the petal. Oh, I forgot one. I'm back here, just to darken things up. And uh, now it's already time for the gel pen. So, you see, um, I had said in the last video that I would focus on purple more in this one. So this page here is way more purple than it is pink. I do have the purple as my main color and the pink to have the accent color almost or to have it pop. Uh, I'm not having um, all of the leaves in pink and only the flowers in purple. That would be the same principle uh, like I had last week with the Copics. So this is where um, it's a good thing to decide early on which color is your background or base color, in this case purple, 
And which color do you want to use for a focal point for something to pop? In this case, for me, it would be it would be pink. So yeah, this is how I like to use the Indian markers. These are the combinations, the color combinations that I like best. So um, I stayed way more on the cooler side, but I do have a few little pieces here on the um, on the blossoms, and also uh, this is um, it, this sits in the middle between um, warm and cool tones. It's slightly tilted towards the cool tones, but it's still warm enough. To not be a cold color like the dark purple, for example. So um, the lighter, almost yellowy parts here, they're the warm colors and the rest is all the cold. So I pretty much switched things exactly around from last week. And this is what I wanted to show you how that looks and how I like to use that color combination. I hope you enjoyed watching along. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Fill my comment section with wonderful words. I will see you next week with uh, another way to use uh, pinks and purples in a coloring book. There's two more videos to go for that com uh, color combination before the uh, coloring challenge and a bit of a scenery coloring going on again in the Outlander and the Magical City books. Um, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. That is very much appreciated by me and it really, really helps. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that bell button so that you're notified whenever I release a new video. Take good care, folks. Have a wonderful day and um, enjoy with maybe some coloring, some painting, some drawing, whatever it is that makes your artsy heart happy. Have a wonderful day, folks. Bye-bye.